With these problems, we're going to practice um, some common core questions that we expect to see uh, in April. This is 2016, so um, will they be the exact same questions? No, but similar way of uh, solving and uh, thinking through the problem. So in this case, we have a half a pound of flour is poured into a jar. If the jar occupies two, uh, flour occupies two fifths of the jar, what quantity of flour could be stored in the jar? So now at Common Core, there may not just be four of these. There may be eight, and there may be three different kinds of answers. Or they may actually have to write in what they did and how they solved it. So in this case, the key is um, setting up um, the equation. So we have half a pound of flour equals two-fifths of the jar. So I'm going to make, I guess we could make these labeled F for flour, and this is for the jar. And we want to know how much um, flour we'd have if we have a full jar. So we, this is the equation we're going to be solving. We have two-fifths of the jar full, and we want it to be completely full. Now we can look at that and figure, okay, two-fifths, if we double this and made it four-fifths, the jar is still not full. And so that means if we doubled this, if we doubled, we made this four-fifths, this would be one. So we know our answer's got to be one or more. I mean, logically, you could probably choose this one right now. But we know it can't be this. It already is one half pound. And if we're doubling it and still not getting a full jar, um, it can't be this either. So the key to making this a one, when we have a division, which is two divided by five, we always do the opposite. And that means we multiply, and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Any number multiplied by the reciprocal is going to be 1. 10 over 10, if you cross multiply, that'd be 1. And since this is an e equality, what we do on one side, we do on the other. So in this case, we multiply through, and we're going to get 5 fourths flour equals 1 full jar. So this would be 1 and 1 fourth. Uh, pounds of flour equals one jar and one and one fourth if we made this like a point five if we made this point five instead of one and a half we'd have got it immediately but one and one fourth also equals one point two five point two five being one fourth of one so again the key is setting it up correctly and picking the variable you need to solve for in this case they want to know in the jar. So that means we'd have to take our two-fifths jar and make it one, make it full. Okay, another problem. Three-fourths of two-thirds of a meter. In this case, when we want to find what three-fourths of any equation is, etc., we're going to multiply. So we know what 3 fourths of 2 is. We'd multiply 2 times 3 fourths. In this case, we're just going to multiply fractions. 3 fourths of 2 thirds. So in this case, we can really make this simple by cross multiplying. 3 goes into 3 one time. So 3 goes into both those. 2 goes into 2 and 4. 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 goes into 4, uh, 2 goes into 2 once, and after you cross multiply, you multiply top, 1 times 1, times bottom, so that'd be 1 half meter. And let's try one more. So it'd be good for your uh, student or yourself to set these problems up and solve them and then go and check the answer and then maybe try it again maybe put a couple different numbers in there just so you're familiar with it so if you read this the revenue of an online store is proportional to the monthly marketing budget of the store as can be seen 
So this times some number is going to give this. So if we multiply this and 140,000 and 70,000, etc., by this whatever number we pick, it's always going to give us this answer. So um, you can pick any one you want because we're going to divide this by that to see how many times we'd multiply this to make it that. So we're going to see how many of these go into this. So if we set it up, 105,000, how many times would it go into 262,500? So we've got to get our decimals right. So this is 105,000. So if we wanted to make it, you know, we put the dot right there. So this would go in there two times. So we'd have, that would be 210,000. Put our dot there. And that gives us 52,500. And it wouldn't go 105,000, it wouldn't go to 52,000. So we put a dot here, bring another zero down. And now we have 525,000 by bringing this extra uh, zero down. And 105, we're going to 525 five times. So two times that would be 525. Or five times 105,000 would be 525. So our answer is 2.5. So the cost portion of the revenue is um, 2.5 or 2.5. Two it's so 2.5, 2.5. And, so and, and now they give us another number. So what if it was 128,000? So in this case, you can multiply by 2.5 if you want. I'm just going to say 2.5 is 2.5. So I'm going to multiply this by 2. I'm going to get 256,000. That's my 2. And then I'm going to take half of it. So I have 2 and a half. So half of that would be 64,000. And if I add those together, I'm going to get 320,000. You could get the same answer by taking our 2.5 and multiplying through. You would still get um, 320,000 when you added these together. And so it'd be 320,000. Notice we had to put two answers inside there. And they may also ask us to justify our answer. So then if we took 2.5 here, here, and here, and here, we would get the same answer. If we want to check it out, 2 times 70,000 would be 140. Half of 70,000 would be 35,000. 140,000 plus 35 would be 175. So this would always give us this answer. So practice some of these. Maybe work them through. Um, you know, discuss them. And then, you know, start with a blank slate, the previous page, and... Um, Go ahead and see if you can solve them each time.